Well, my it. vision for the future is, as long as I'm alive, we'll have plenty of misconceptions to fight about addiction, so I'll always have a business. Um, I'm, I'm writing, I mean, I wrote Love and Addiction to say addiction wasn't limited to drugs. I wrote Seven Tools to Beat Addiction to say, you know, we need a cognitive approach to addiction. I wrote Addiction Prove Your Child to describe how to raise children free of addiction. And now I'm writing a kind of a consciousness approach to addiction because in, there's always powerful strands, probably dominant, probably overwhelmingly powerful in the United States, pointing us in the wrong direction, dealing with psychoactive substances, where we're more often than not going to emphasize and encourage the wrong approach rather than the right approach. And as long as that environment lives, speaking strictly selfishly, well, at least I'll have a chance to present ideas that are seen as kind of radical I guess my main problem is it's going to be hard for me to win the Nobel Prize under those circumstances, you know, when people think that my approach is kooky, despite the fact that it's evidence-based, rational, culturally integrated, and successful. So that's the best I can say for you right now. I, I don't see America changing in a wholesale direction in my own life, hearkening back to how I began this interview. Uh, in the 80s, there was a man, he's still around, named John Wallace, whose career was based on, and, and Mary Penry is now dead, whose careers were based on attacking me and harm reduction proponents, saying that these are the devils incarnate. They're saying that people don't have to abstain. Like, that's a big success story in America. And they really ruined people's careers, and they came close to ruining mine. People can't imagine and imagine what a full court press attack that people like John Wallace was writing articles with my name in the title. One sad irony of all of this, people, some of them like you to tell the story. Mary Pendry published a study showing that controlled drinking study, which found better outcomes for controlled drinking subjects than abstinence subjects. She published in Science, the most prestigious journal in America. It was a bullshit study. It only looked at the controlled drinking stu subjects and pointed out the number of relapses they had, which was less. The, the original study said, well, they had fewer relapses than the abstinence subjects, which was what we would now call harm reduction. It wasn't controlled drinking. That woman took up with an alcoholic who had been uh, a resident at the VA hospital where she was a counselor. He got really drunk and killed her and then killed himself. So she had the success of arguing that abstinence is infallible, far superior to harm reduction and controlled drinking, and as a result, she ended up dead. It's an irony, but still, to some degree, her point of view prevails, uh, despite her sad demise.